The second trap to avoid with your investment real estate is what's called retreating the fine. I'm Alex Stavarowski with Impact 1031 and Ridgegate Financial. Over the last few years, we've talked with thousands of real estate investors dealing with the same problems we'll discuss today. When I talk about retreating the fine, I mean that you've got a problem. Something is causing an issue. And maybe it's not causing that much pain, but enough to start looking into some options. Then once you start looking into those options, well, starts to get a lot more complicated than you were expecting. And so I'm going to back off to where I was, what I know, what I feel is safe and comfortable, because I don't want to make any of these changes and get out into this wide unknown world. Problem with retreating to fine is that a lot of people end up with a lot more pain than they would have if they had just done something early on. If they'd taken the action when they first noticed it was important enough to set up a call or talk to somebody else, then it's a matter of doing taking those steps then and working through whatever complications or problems might be in the way because ultimately they're only going to grow. And if it's causing issues now, you can likely bet it'll keep causing issues later. I was talking with a family earlier this week that has a portfolio of over eight figures worth of investment real estate between commercial properties and residential properties. They got into real estate in the first place because they needed a building for their business. So they were in the engineering field and the business needed somewhere to live. Over time, they started building out the portfolio to include more commercial property, more residential, uh, but they never had the intention of becoming a landlord or a property manager. And by the time we started talking about it, the residential side of the real estate was causing a little bit of an, an itch. It was causing some distractions, keeping them from living the life that they wanted. And so we started talking a little bit more about what does this actually mean for you in the long term if nothing changes? What does this look like? And getting into some of the different ways that they might be able to help solve that problem. But ultimately, it became a matter of, "Ah, I think I'm okay. It's not that bad. And when I'm talking with a family about a situation like this, the first place I go is our framework, which is purpose planning portfolio. The purpose component is what are you trying to achieve? Each piece of a portfolio or each piece of your life really should have a specific purpose that it's designed to work towards. And when we're looking at something like a piece of real estate, what is the purpose of that? What was it initially? And where is it supposed to take you over time? When we're looking at a plan, what a plan can strive to do for you is accomplish that purpose, really to take that individual piece and move it forward so that you are living the lifestyle that you want with the goals you have in mind. And a plan, a lot of times people will come to me with a set solution in mind, something that they think of as the best way to get it done. But a good question to ask is, is that the only way to get it done? Or is it the best way to get it done? And if not, we can certainly discuss different opportunities to figure out how can you ultimately arrive at that purpose you have in mind. From there, the portfolio solutions that help us to achieve that plan are easy to implement and execute on. So when I was having this conversation with this family about the the properties that they were looking to sell, the question of purpose comes up. We're layering our framework of purpose planning portfolio onto this situation. And how does what we do align with what they're trying to achieve? So for the purpose, it was a very simple question of what are you actually trying to do here? Ultimately, the legacy goals and generational wealth building of real estate was a top priority for him. But In the short term, it was a matter of, I need to find a way to get these distractions off of my plate so I can go and travel, enjoy my lifestyle, and do the things that I want without having to worry about this investment that I got into for a good reason, but now is not serving the purpose that I needed to. And when we look at those kinds of layers of a purpose that is not only more immediate, but also long term, that's really where the planning comes into play, is figuring out what can a plan do to make sure that it's not a legacy only purpose it's also a lifestyle purpose of the here and now and for that situation there's a number of different factors to consider you know what's the timeline for moving this how long do you want to keep dealing with this before it's painful enough essentially to make some sort of change and when we're looking at a plan that helps them to accomplish both levels of that purpose, then it's going to be an important thing to 
consider all of the different factors that they have with this real estate. It's not their only piece of real estate, but they were coming up on the sale of one of these properties in a matter of weeks. So that's going to put some constraints of timing within the 1031 exchange to figure out what do we do coming from here. Um, and when we first started discussing the situation, it was looking at alternative options um, to active management or getting back into another property. And that was really the conversation of figuring out how do we get from these distractions, the headaches that we're dealing with into real estate that's not going to cause that, but still is providing for us in the ways that we need. For their situation, this income was more supplemental, but still necessary for them to live the lifestyle that they had in mind. So we needed to look at options that were going to be strong opportunities, but also striving towards the purpose that they had in mind. So when we were looking at the planning components of figuring out how can we help to strive towards the purpose that they had in mind, both in the short term of the lifestyle they wanted and the long term of the legacy goals that they were working towards, the planning component comes into play on a multiple on multiple different levels. Um, on one level, it's what does it take to get there? How can we achieve those goals uh, with the most simple steps possible? Um, Obviously, if the real estate's in place right now, there are steps to take to get it sold. They were actually about to go through a 1031 exchange with one of the residential properties, which brought up the conversation of, do we want to go back into the same sort of situation and try to find an actively managed property that we can deal with ourselves? Or do we want to consider other opportunities that are maybe more passive, less of a headache, less of a distraction? So that conversation really revolved around Again, back up to striving towards that purpose that they had. What do you want to end up with? And the planning component is figuring out, is what you have in mind the only way to get there? And talking with all of the people that we work with in this space of real estate, there are a lot of different ideas on how they can achieve what they want, whether that's paying the taxes, 1031 exchanges, but there's oftentimes more than one way to accomplish a goal. And with this situation, by the end of the conversation, it was a very good conversation to talk about the different opportunities, but started to get the feeling that some of the complexities of what we discussed were going to be a little bit too much to work with. And his comment was, well, I just want to let you know, we are still looking at other options. And the main reason we're here is because we haven't found anything. And I, I tried to challenge him on it a little bit by saying, well, I thought the main reason you were here is because these properties are a distraction and going back into more of the same thing is, is not something you want to do. And that's the trap of retreating to fine. Retreating back to, well, this pain isn't as present as it would be to make me do something else. So overcoming the complexities or opening my mind to different opportunities is going to be more painful than dealing with this pain right now. So I'll come back to it later on problem is later on it might be more pain than you're willing or able to deal with and then you're going to make decisions backed into a corner instead of from a proactive approach. The problem with a lot of the traps that we see in investment real estate is that oftentimes they compound. So that first trap we talked about of the status quo and now this trap of retreating to fine are really things that go hand in hand. It's not uncommon for somebody to accept the situation as it is over time and think that, oh, well, this is good enough. And then when problems come up, well, it's painful, but it's not as painful as it would be of trying to make a, a radical shift or a big change into something else, even if that would ultimately solve the problem. So they retreat to fine and the status quo continues. I think for a lot of these situations, a lot of the families that we talk with, that's very common and something that they're dealing with and at the point that we get on call, get on a call to discuss the situation the pain has gotten bad enough for them to reach out and try to get some help but talking through some of the solutions talking through the plan the portfolio can lead to a little bit of trepidation when it comes to maybe I am fine and helping them to understand that the purpose they're trying to achieve is more important than the temporary pain it might take to get there is something that we can certainly discuss and if that feels like you or these traps feel very familiar, feel free to book a call with us and we can discuss your situation specifically. Mm -hmm.